Hi guys, this is my June 2021 update on UK property prices and the UK housing market. In this video, I'm going to explain why the UK property price boom will continue for at least three years. I'm going to explain how you can easily get sidetracked by following the wrong strategy at this unique time. And I'm going to pull it all together and show you some trends for the next couple of years and explain what the right strategy is to be pursuing right now. Hi, I'm Ranjan Bhattacharya. I've been investing in property for 30 years. You may have seen me on the hit Sky TV show Property Elevator or attended one of our Central London property networking events. Now, if you found this channel for the first time, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon because we put out new content every week, all dedicated to keeping you on top of your property investing game. Now, UK property prices are booming. You don't need me to tell you that. You've seen it everywhere in the media and other commentators basically were saying the same thing. Now, there are many reasons why property prices are booming. And if you haven't already seen last month's housing update, I recommend you watch that video, um, maybe after you've seen this, but watch that video because all those points hold true. So I'm not going to repeat them in this video. Now, regular viewers to this channel will know that last year I was unique among commentators in predicting that in, in 2021 we were going to see a booming house market when other people were predicting some sort of crash. Uh, for me, all the trends were out there. And I'm going to be out of step again with other commentators. I mean, I hear other commentators say that, you know, when SDLT, when the stamp duty holiday ends, when furlough ends, there's going to be a little dip, there's going to be a little bit of a wobble in prices, and that's the time to go diving in. Well, I think that is absolutely wrong. And I'm going to stick my neck out here and I'm going to say to you guys that the property market in the UK is going to boom for at least the next three years. Now let's back that up uh, and explain why I'm reaching that conclusion. Firstly, it is not property values that are increasing and you've got to be uh, very clear about that. Values are not going up value is staying the same. What is happening is it's a structural shift, it's a structural movement in the price of the property. And that's all down to the currency printing that's gone on and the inflationary effect. It's very easy to turn on the printing presses for money, but that doesn't mean you can turn on the printing press for everything else that people want to buy. When you give people a ton of cash, it means that they've got more money to spend, but the goods and services may not be necessarily out there to meet the increased demand, and therefore their prices go up. It doesn't mean their value go up, it means that the price is going up just relative to the increased money there is in supply. From the beginning of this year, we've seen this in the uh, prices of building materials, whether you're buying timber or plasterboard or cement or bricks. As this report in The Guardian shows, prices have gone up. But what I'm about to show you is the classic indicator uh, of this happening. And this is the used car market. I remember when I was a kid in the late 1970s and I was out there with my late great pop uh, washing the car on a Sunday and my dad told me um, a simple story which really perked up my interest. He said, you know, I bought this car one year ago, brand new, and it's actually the price of this car if I was to sell it today is actually more than I paid for it one year ago. And I couldn't understand that concept because we all know that cars depreciate in value. And yes, they do. But if you've got inflation, if you've got inflation in the economy, then of course, um, what can happen is even things that naturally depreciate, the price of those things can go up. And this is happening again right now. I've got here a report from Auto Express, and this has been reported in the Financial Times and other places as well just recently. And this is all about how the 
uh, secondhand car market is hitting all-time highs. Now there's some examples here of how a popular sort of Mercedes A-Class um, has basically was, was selling, a second-hand A-Class was selling for about 14, uh, about 15,000 pounds in January and those that same model is now listed for about 17,000 pounds today uh, towards the end of May. So the motoring press is reporting this, but to find out the reasons why this is happening, I think the FT does a great job on this. And they're, they're going back to this point that I'm talking about in an article from a few days ago. Uh, they're talking about inflation uh, indicators, the used car edition. And they're saying that this trend is happening all over the world, uh, basically where they've printed money. And this graph is fascinatingly telling. What this shows here is that in April, now throughout, throughout from 2018 um, to um, up, right up until March 2021, every month used car prices fall. That is, I mean, it's like Isaac Newton and apples, you know, they fall to the ground, don't they? They don't go up unless you're sitting on a classic car. But look what's happened here. So we're seeing in the last three months, there's been a steady month on month rise in used car prices. And last month, they rose by an astonishing 6.7% in the month of May. So this graph is actually for, um, it shows the movement of uh, prices of used cars, which are three years old and got 60,000 miles on the clock. And what that equates to is an 825 pound rise in one month of a used car, 60,000 miles on the clock, three years old. Now this doesn't happen in normal times. The car is not increasing in value, is it? These second-hand cars, they're not increasing in value. It is price. It is the price that's going up simply because of the money printing that's gone on. And what this allows savvy property entrepreneurs to do is to figure out what is actually going on in the property market. So when I say the value of your house ain't going up, that's what I mean. The price is going up, but not the value. So this is not just happening in the UK, but it's happening in the USA too, where they've also printed a ton of money and they're seeing the same sort of inflationary effects. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but what I wanted to really tell you about was what is the most exciting opportunity in property right now, and that is repurposing defunct commercial buildings to residential use. Now, most people don't really know where to start, what to look for, and how to exploit these opportunities, and that's why I've prepared 90 minutes of free training for you to get you started on this wonderful journey. You can register for this free training at property-workshop.com. Join me on that free training, and I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of the video. Now these month on month rises in secondhand uh, car values, as I said, I haven't seen uh, since the late 1970s when there were similar inflationary pressures. So what does this mean for you guys? Well, all these indicators mean that we are not seeing an increase in value of property. What you're seeing is a structural shift, a realignment in price of property to reflect the fact that there's simply more currency out there. Now what's adding to the inflationary effect is also a little bit of FOMO, fear of missing out. Now these are folks who have saved up a deposit and basically they're afraid. They're desperate to get on, to, on the property buying bandwagon. They're afraid that with monthly increases in house prices, uh, they're worried that they simply, if they wait, they won't have enough deposit to um, buy the property of their dreams. Because of course, if you are saving money in the bank, it's earning next to nothing with next to zero interest rates, which are pay payable right now. So what we're seeing is the inflation in prices is actually driving people or attracting people to the property market because they want to bring forward their purchase decisions to make sure their deposit goes further today rather than in six months time when it won't go as far. To be honest with you, the inflation effect on its own can be managed if you know what you're doing, and I'll explain what to do about that later on in the video. What gives the market, the property market, a little bit of froth is the number of people who are jumping on the bandwagon because of the FOMO effect. 
Now, if you're getting value out of this video, make sure you subscribe uh, and hit the bell icon. Also, smash that like button because it means YouTube will show this to more people like yourself. Also, share this video with uh, f your property friends who may be interested in what's happening in the property market right now. So the important thing when the market is a little bit frothy with all this FOMO crowd adding to the party is to make sure you invest in property knowing exactly what you're doing and following the right strategy and understanding where you make your money. Now there are two things you need to be doing in a market like this. One is to hedge against this inflation that is rampant right now. The second thing that you need to be thinking about is how you can beat the inflation. Because remember, just hedging against inflation means that you're just preserving what you've got. Um, beating it means that you're actually creating real value and you're increasing your pot. Now that is the thing to do, that is the trick. Now let's look at how to hedge against inflation. Hedging against inflation um, really is about buying income producing assets but buying them using the power of leverage. Because remember, the wonderful, wonderful thing about inflation is that the price inflates over time but the debt doesn't. So if you have borrowed, say, 70% of a property's value uh, to buy the thing, then the debt stays frozen uh, in time at today's levels, but the price of the property increases. So that means, effectively, uh, by that increasing price, you are hedging against the effects of inflation. Now, there's a lot of talk about whether it's right to buy property or whether it makes sense to buy property in a market such as this. Well, it does make sense as long as you know what you're doing and you're doing the right thing. There's an old saying in property, you know, don't wait to buy, buy and wait. But I don't strictly follow uh, that logic because that, to me, is a very, very passive way of investing in property. You've got to actually just buying property and sitting there and waiting, all you will achieve is a hedge against inflation. What you won't do is create value. And if you create value, you create wealth, which outpaces the inflationary effect of property and puts money in your pocket. So how do you do that? Well, here's the thing. I've been doing property for about 30 years now. And one thing about property is that it is, it is pretty much constant change. Every six or seven years, um, something changes, whether it's regulation, whether it's tax, whether it's market circumstances, whether it's consumer taste, something changes, which means that you have to shift your strategy. You have to change your strategy uh, because certain things become more difficult. Um, the wind is blowing against you and certain things become easier. The wind is in your sails. So the thing to do in property is to know when to adjust course and when to set your sails accordingly so that you can have an easier ride. You're going with the flow rather than against the flow. So post COVID-19, a lot of things have changed in the world, in the economy, and also in property. And this is one of these times to pivot, to change direction, to set your sails. If you haven't already done so, make sure you smash that like button. It means that more people like you will get to see this video. So let's piece together some of the trends that are happening out there and how you can piece together a strategy going forward that is not just going to allow you to hedge against inflation, but basically outpace it. And to outpace it, what you've got to do is build real value, not rely on the rise in price, which is happening anyway by market circumstances and the economy and the currency printing, but it's to add value to the property and that is something that you do that you create that value in the property through your entrepreneurial skill and what you know so the easiest way of creating value is to follow the trends the trends that are coming together right now in the marketplace so we have talked about the trend of property prices and, we've, and when we're talking about property prices we're talking about residential property prices and those are sky high and rising but in the same area as your residential property is located, you can pick up commercial real estate for up to a third of the price per square foot 
as residential real estate in the same location. And that's because commercial property is in massive oversupply right now, thanks to COVID-19 and thanks to the changing way in which business is being done. Commercial property only exists if there's commercial occupiers willing to do business from those premises. And for all sorts of reasons, yes, there are commercial occupiers uh, out there in the marketplace, but they're looking for a lot less space than they were in previous years, simply because the way they're doing business has changed completely. And we're seeing a massive oversupply in offices and also in retail premises. I've got here on the screen is a list is a uh, list of all the Santander branches that are up for closing just this year in the UK and there are tons up and down the land. Here's a list of just the William Hill betting shops which are going to be closing down up and down the land. Now these sort of buildings are typically commercial on the ground floor with um, ancillary space on the upper floors. But if you could only convert some or all of that space into residential, then you would be quids in because what you would do is take a piece of real estate which is already in the right location, but its value is so much less per square foot than if it was residential. But if you could make it into residential, then you will get an immediate uplift in value, not price. Because remember, inflation will get you a price uplift and that's something that you have no control over. Doing something real to the property will get you a value uplift. But what's stopping you from doing that sort of conversion? Well, it's those nasty old guys in the local planning department. They don't basically like you doing anything to any properties. They call themselves development control departments and that's exactly what they do, stop you from doing anything. The government knowing this, knowing that there is massive oversupply in um, commercial stock, knowing that there's still a massive demand for residential stock, they've made it simpler, very, very simple and straightforward to convert commercial buildings to residential use. And that is through something called permitted development. Permitted development is a light touch planning uh, approval system which allows developers to take on a project with certainty that they're going to get planning permission for either partially or fully converting that space to residential use. And this has been made easier since 2013, but thanks to some brand new permitted development rights which come into effect in August in 2021, it's going to be easier still. Now in 2013, it became permitted development to convert um, offices into residential use and whole swathes of them have been converted and there's even more opportunity converting offices uh, into residential space coming up with these new permitted development rights that are coming into force in, or in August. But it's been possible to convert retail premises to uh, residential use since 2013. But predominantly what people have been doing is converting the rear of a shop into residential and keeping the front part as a shop. Now over the next few years, this trend uh, for full conversion of shops into residential use is going to accelerate. You know, it, and it's just a reversal because many secondary, I mean, I'm not talking about high street parades where you've got the Boots and the WH Smith and tons of footfall. Those are likely to stay high streets uh, for a long, long time to come. I'm talking about the many secondary and tertiary parades, shopping parades that are out there where you tend to have mom and pop shops and you tend to have lower footfall. Now, those sort of places um, pretty much used to be, back in the day, residential. And then they were converted to small shops. And now what's going to happen is that those parades are just going to be converted back into what they originally were, which was residential properties. But the thing is, what are these shops going to look like when they are converted back into residential use? And is anyone going to want to stay in um, a shop? in terms of living there. Now that's where the architects come in uh, to come up with clever design solutions to make those sort of premises more appealing. And the places to watch 
for those sort of trends. The places which always lead the way are the high value areas. So what you need to be looking at is what is happening in terms of retail to residential conversion in areas where property prices per square foot are very high. So I'm talking about the Chelsea's, the Kensington's, the Islington's, the Fulham's, the, those sort of London premium zones. So what we have on screen here is a, a shop and uppers in a secondary parade in Islington. So as you can see, the shop front is nothing special. It's quite ugly. And uh, I guess the question is, well, who would want to live in the ground floor shop unit of this building? So this is what they've done with this. And you can see that with a clever little bit of architectural design, it is actually possible to make um, something that is in keeping with the shop front vibe, but also has a residential desirability as well. So what we're going to see now that retail to residential conversion is firmly on the agenda in terms of being permitted development, which means basically light touch planning. You find the site, you know what the parameters are that let you do these sort of conversions and you're good to go. Now that it's the planning guys aren't getting in the way and stopping you from doing that, the challenge is going to be to make architecturally attractive uh, conversions that people are going to want to want to live in. So let's summarize with all these trends. You've got residential prices going up. You've got commercial properties in oversupply. You've got easier and easier permitted development rights, which allow you to convert from commercial to residential. Once you've converted to com residential, what should you do with those properties? Should you uh, rent them out or sell them on? Well, here's another trend that's beginning to gather a little bit of momentum. And um, I knew this was going to happen, but I'm a little bit surprised at how early we're starting to see some of the data emerge. And that is the impact of all these government incentives encouraging people to buy property, the 95% mortgage and that kind of thing. We're already seeing reported in the Negotiator magazine, which is the industry publication for the estate agent and letting agent industry. They're saying they've got this uh, dramatic headline saying 95% loan to value mortgages, mortgage schemes are sucking tenants out of the rental market. And what they're presenting in this article is this, is this survey done by a leading national letting agency chain saying that 18% of their landlords are reporting that they're losing tenants. They're lo they've got tenants moving out because they're planning to now buy their property, um, taking advantage of government 95% mortgages. So sticking all this together is reasonably straightforward. You know, you get your commercial property, you use permitted development rights to easily convert it to residential use. You create one bedroom um, starter homes that appeal to first time buyers on the first rung of the housing ladder. You make them look appealing and you sell them into that market. The, that market is at the moment undersupplied. Prices are going up and there's easy availability of credit for your market to, to basically buy that stock. To put it simply, when you change your property investing game to go with the flow, to go with the trends of the day, it is far easier to get much further uh, faster. Inflation is a big problem out there. But if you have a strategy that goes with the flow, that takes advantage of all the aligning trends and which gives you something which not allows you to hedge against inflation but beat inflation, you'll come out of this smelling of roses. So what I've got for you is a 90 minute live masterclass where I'm going to explain to you, I'm going to set out for you how you can take advantage for, of what I see as the biggest gold rush that property investors have seen for more than a decade. I'm going to set out for you what commercial properties you need to be looking at to take maximum advantage of these permitted development rights so you can easily convert these to residential use and create maximum value out of doing property in today's marketplace. So if you want to learn, if you want to learn these strategies, if you want to have a root map of how you can succeed in property over the next few years, sign up for my free 90 minute masterclass and I'll show you how. So join me on the masterclass and see you guys in the next video.